Uh, Colin Clark, Breaking Defense. Um, you're talking about greatly increasing the amount of prototyping. You're talking about reaching out to new companies. Now, where do you find these new companies? And how do you convince, I mean, you didn't do that well with Google for whatever reasons. Um, and you're talking about reaching out essentially to a whole new array of firms that haven't necessarily done aerospace. So how do you convince them to come in when there are so few tendrils out to them that are sort of lasting and... Well, uh, your question has a certain point, Colin, because the only answer I can give you now is that if, if I were a new company maybe two years ago, there's no way I would have come to the US government first to either start developing my product or looking for capital. Because the way that we work with tech innovators is horrible. We work with companies as if they're all the same, all defense prime-like in nature. And that's, that's killed us in terms of not having relationships with tech startups. I think we're making a huge, huge push with our pitch days, with our AFWorks team that's doing great at tech outreach because we've actually had great response from, from venture capitalists across the country that, all right, we're now, we now see you as a, like an actual player. We're cautious because we, we know you're the government and that you can screw things up easily, but we view you as a player, so let's start the dialogue. So if you're not familiar with a pitch day, it's a simple idea. If you're a tech company, you give us a pitch. If we like it, we can put you on contract in 15 minutes and pay you about 15 minutes after that. So it, it's a lot more like a shark tank, and it makes sense to work with a tech startup that way. I would never buy a bomber that way or a fighter that way. I'd have a few more questions. But to get started with industry, it should be really easy. So I think the fact that we've, we've done that, once in New York, there'll be two more events in a month in Boston, space pitch days coming up in the fall, which will be a big event that will be at the phase two level, so million dollar plus awards, which will be a bigger event, which we're really excited about are getting the word out that you don't have to be near an airbase to work with us. And if you have an idea, it's not gonna be hard to get through the door. The part we haven't talked a lot about publicly is what happens once you get in the door. And so that is what the, our, um, our AFWorks team is really championing is this tech mentorship. We can't just put a company that doesn't know anything about defense on contract and that probably doesn't wanna be a defense company and just say, well, I hope you figure it out, good luck. That's not how it works in, in many uh, tech ecosystems. There are accelerators, there are tech mentors that help you figure out your business cape, help you figure out your, your market, help get your business practices in place so that you can run efficiently. And we've partnered with a lot of those uh, companies like Mass Challenge, we're doing a tech accelerator coming up. We've done ones with Techstars where we've taken industry through mentorship and then put them on contract if their business case closed. That did some really cool things, Colin, where we guaranteed to match commercial investment dollar for dollar. That's been done, right? New practice that makes a ton of sense. Why wouldn't you want to multiply your money in the government? Common practice in commercial industry. So what we have to do after we leave the accelerator phase is we have got to get those companies connected to programs at that point. So can't grow if there's not that future path to the program. And so that's just, that's just been some, uh, I guess some direction for me to, to my program executive officers that I care about this work, that I expect them to be personally engaged on it, that I expect small businesses, tech startups, to be an intimate part of their programs. And if it's not, then I'm gonna take the money that they have for that and shift it to others who are good at it. Absolutely. So the question was, could a tritable aircraft be a place to start? Absolutely. In fact, we'd, we'd be insane not to start there to see what can tech startups do in the realm of a tritable systems. Put a cap on the dollar amount. It, we've got to reprogram ourselves about what small business can do. There is a small business on contract with us with the first X plane in the history of the department that built a hypersonic test bed for us. This is a weapon that comes down and flies at insane speed so we can take measurements. A small business made that for us on a $40 million contract, I believe. Small business doing hypersonics. 
So if a small business can help us in hypersonics, a small business can help us in attritables. So we should start there, not just because we'll probably get a better price point, and not just because we'll be working with a company that will be agile because it's small and nimble and hungry, uh, but because it'll start growing the industry base, which we've got to treat as not just a talking point, right? It's so thin that we should start thinking deliberately about how do we expand it, not just, not just doing business and tracking how big it is. Attritables have a great promise for that. Next-gen weapons, where we might do collaborative teams, as was mentioned earlier, like swarming weapons, you probably don't want to make every weapon as expensive as you can. You want to have exquisite things teamed with cheap things. You know, maybe a startup company can't make a high-end weapon with an, you know, with an AESA seeker on it, but can probably make something that's really cheap that can follow it. So we just got to recalibrate, Colin, because if we don't and we continue to be difficult to work with, then we're going to find our industry base continuing to shrink. But what I'm really excited about is that the pitch event that we did in New York was the first. A lot of skepticism. And just self-starting across the Air Force, there are 13 now planned. Just typically lieutenants or captains that want to do it, that take that idea up to their boss, and their boss says, will you do it? So this is really being led by, by Captain's Marvel across the Air Force that see the value of these tech startups that are passionate about it. And what I love about this as the acquisition exec is that this is a way for us to delegate authority all the way down to them. Now, I probably can't, based on government ethics standards, say if you're older than a certain age, you can't run one of these tech events, but 